you are a father, you know, and if you have many children, then the question could be, uh, who is your favorite child? No, <laughs> difficult to answer. Uh, so then you were a little diplomatic, saying like, like uh, well, I love my one of my sons for all these uh, aspects, and I love another son for, for that, uh, and my daughter for this and that, you know. Uh, so, so, uh, but uh, I shall uh, give you uh, an answer. I think may, maybe uh, my, my favorite uh, uh, book is uh, the Solitary Mystery, which will have to be appearing here in Indonesia later. But, uh, but, uh, so, but I, I'm very proud of having written so this word also. My wife's favorite book is definitely uh, the book called The Storyteller. I don't know the uh, Indonesian name. The Storyteller. Uh, the Ring Master's Talk. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, the, I have only sons, but now I have also a, a granddaughter. So, but, but I never had daughters. But I have a literary daughter in, in the book called uh, uh, Through a Glass Darkly. Uh, because I have held so close to her, you know? So in a way, that is my favorite book also, because it's my favorite character, in a way. So, uh, okay, sorry. to my wife, I'm now uh, working on a novel uh, that will not bring us any income. And she said, so write it quickly then, you know. It, it became absolutely the opposite situation. We started to earn a lot of money, you know, from, from uh, uh, that book, but also from the other books, you know. So we had, we had to ask ourselves what to do with the money, you know. Uh, and we decided to make a foundation uh, because we are both uh, very concerned about the environment. You know, uh, oh, you can say this first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 another, another, another question I often have is the question if you had written Sophie's work today, it's 20 years since I wrote it, would you, would you write it differently? And the answer is yes. Because I would have to written more about the environment, more about the climate. Uh, I think uh, the most important philosophical question today is the question how we shall be able to preserve life conditions on Earth. And it's a philosophical question. Sometimes a, a, a related question is uh, whether I have a favorite philosopher, you know? Yes. Uh, and in, in a way, um, uh, I, I, it's not easy to answer because the different philosophers, they were investigating different topics, you know? And they also lived in different parts of history, you know? So uh, uh, I, I, I may be fascinated by uh, some philosophers trying to investigate the relationship between mind and body, you know, I think it's a very uh, fascinating subject. But today I will discuss this with a neurologist more than with a philosopher. Like, I mean, what is this universe, you know? Uh, it was discussed and debated among philosophers. But today I would like to discuss uh, the universe with the uh, astrophysicists uh, or astronauts, you know? Uh, in general, I would say that many of the, the old fundamental philosophical questions, they have moved today into natural science. So I am today more and more uh, uh, reading uh, natural science. 
there, there is uh, much more philosophy in science than it used to be. Uh, and also there is more science in philosophy. So it is not anymore a division between uh, science and, uh, and philosophy. But, no, okay, you can say this first. I have, I have one more very important comment. Uh, and that is a very basic question. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that for me, philosophy is uh, uh, consists of some few fundamental human questions. And they are, these questions, divided in two different categories. Now, one category is all the questions, the so-called ontological questions, like what is this universe? What is the nature of this universe? Uh, that God exists? Uh, uh, do we go to another existence after this life on Earth? Uh, uh, can I rely on my senses? Now, like all these questions, they, they, are, they are kind of the basement of, of philosophy, and these questions do have answers, even though the answers are not accessible. And so, people said before, why do you ask all these questions if there are no answers? Uh, I mean, it's just like discussing the backside of the moon. And we will never see the backside of the moon. But today, we in this store, <laughs> you can buy a book with detailed facts of the backside of the moon. Everything changed after the Apollo program, you know? Uh, and I am myself amazed how much more we understand today. Take only the last hundred years. In 1905, Albert Einstein conceived the theory of relativism, giving us quite a new and more profound understanding of this universe. Now, in the, uh, the 20s and the 30s, uh, a man called Hubble, he showed that the galaxies are moving from each other. We have got the concept of the expanding universe. In 1953, the two physicists Crick and Watson discovered the DNA molecule. And some 10 years ago, we had the, the, first, the first detailed maps of the human dreams. So we do have more understanding, but the more we understand, the more we also understand that we don't understand. Anyway, this is, uh, this is the one category. Then there is another category. Questions like, what is justice? What is a just life? What is a good life? What is happy life? What is happiness? What are the most profound values in life? Uh, 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 these questions. What is love? What is uh, forgiveness? These questions don't have a specific answer. So we have to ask these questions again and again and again and again in all classrooms and all individuals. We cannot expect to achieve friendship or love without asking the question what is friendship? What is love? We cannot expect to, to, to uh, uh, build a just society without asking the question what is justice? These two categories of, of questions, they are uh, the basement of philosophy. And, of course, also religion relates to these questions. I mean, Christianity and Islam and Buddhism are bringing answers to these questions. What is this world? Will we live after? Uh, but then it's a question of belief, belief. Uh, and it's uh, 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 philosophy is based more on the reason and experience. But I don't see uh, any opposition between religion and philosophy. 
it's possible at the same time both to uh, philosophize, to be a philosopher, and at the same time be a believer. It's not either or. Well, uh, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, I, I think the reason is, you know, that I, I, I start uh, to tell a story and then I, I start to tell a story around the story. Train story. So very much my books are composed like Chinese boxes, you know, with a story in the story in the story, you know. Also, I am fascinated by human imagination. I'm not interested in the so-called fantasy literature. What I mean is that all imagination is somebody's imagination. So, when a person writes a letter, you, it's not only the story that is told in the letter, it is the person who is telling the story. I mean, uh, if you tell me a dream, you tell me two things two different kinds of information. You tell me the story in the dream, but you also tell me about yourself because it's your dream. So this brings a kind of sensuality, psychology, into the, the, the uh, imaginative uh, story. Uh, I mean, when I write uh, the, the book uh, through a glass darkly about the young girl who is uh, suffering from a very serious disease, you know. She is having some encounters with an angel when she is alone in the room. And I will let it up to the reader whether this girl meets the angel in her fantasy or in the room. Anyway, the book is a story about the summit between heaven and earth, uh, between eternity and time. It, it's not so relevant for me uh, uh, whether uh, this uh, encounter is uh, from inside uh, the girl's mind. But then I am not alone as a writer to to let the angel see things, say, say things that is impossible for a young girl to have concepts about, you know? And in many of my other works, in fact, exactly the same. Uh, there is a limit for, I mean, if you, if you have a dream, of course you will have no information in the dream you don't have at all. So, so to, for me this is a question of the, um, I, I'm very aware that the, a story is told by a certain person. That's why I often arrange it as the letters. Yes. The main character in Sophie's world is not Sophie. It's the father of the other girl, Hilda, because he is writing the story of story about something. And something, it goes in the end, is just it. Uh, and we get to know uh, uh, the father of something through his letters, through his story about something. It's the only person of real flesh and blood in that book. This was too long answer. Sorry.